Oh, very well. You caught me there. Uh, but my guest is here. Bernard Mona is the flag bearer of the PNC. He's one of 10 candidates uh, who were disqualified in, you know, post the uh, filing of nominations by the Electoral Commission. He's vehemently rejected that position. Uh, Earlier today, he had spoken to TV3. He said he's unsure why the end, you know, the Electoral Commission would do what it did. Right now, we've had some decision. I want to bring you in at this point. Uh, again, uh, thank you so much for agreeing to speak to us at this time. You've had the decisions now. Uh, the reason for the decisions, excuse me. What are your thoughts about that? <laughs> the Electoral Commission claimed that there were errors on my form. Indeed. So this is the Electoral Commission's own presidential nomination form. Mm -hmm. So just read. It says candidate's personal record. record. You can read one, two, three. Uh, two says voter ID number. Well, one says name. Two mm -hmm. says voter ID number. It also has polling station on the um, right. And uh, three is supposed to be sex. I think it went, you know, printing error. So we have six. Oh, so it's an error. <laughs> you got me, you got me, but I'm trying to get the no, point no, you're no, no. trying to make now. It, it, it's an error. Mm -hmm. Even on the EC presidential nomination forms, they, you said they wanted to write sex, mm -hmm. and they wrote what? Six. And so they can make errors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bernard, Bernard, I'm trying to understand the no, point. No, try to understand what. The EC said that mm -hmm. there were errors on my form. Okay. Now, if you take all the other persons... All the other candidates, the EC indicated there were errors. They identified anomalies. They gave it to the people. They corrected them and they admitted them. Mm -hmm. When it got to us, the EC started fumbling. Don't forget that I've been working with Jean Manson since 2003. Mm -hmm. So for 21 years, she has known my name. But you see the way she was fumbling to mention my name. Have you taken note of that? In addition to that, it was only us that Jean Manson failed to indicate whether they gave us the form with the anomalies and whether we corrected and returned them. Mm -hmm. All other persons, they said they corrected them. People who did not even have tax clearance certificates. They gave it to them to go and get back tax clearance certificates. Mm -hmm. We, you identified some errors, anomalies. You gave us the form on Saturday. We corrected them on Saturday. Returned same to you on Saturday. How come that you cannot indicate there? Right, so wh what errors did the EC identify with your It has application? to be incomplete details of some of the supporters. Okay. And how did it happen? The forms are supposed to be filled in quadruplicates. And so you pick one form and you notice that all the information on a set of forms is valid. Mm -hmm. On one form, a date is omitted. So we're asked to come and put the date. On another, you will see that the ID card was not copied. So all that we did was to look into the other form and copy the ID card number for you. And so we did. So all the corrections that the EC identified, we corrected and ratified them and, send them and, back to and them. returned them to the EC. And at 3.29 p.m. on Saturday, Samuel Kwao called me to acknowledge receipt of our corrected forms. Who is Samuel Kwao? Samuel Kwao is one of the persons working with the EC subcommittees. So he sent me the document, and we corrected them. So if it is that people who have corrected their forms are admitted onto the ballot, then we could not have been disqualified. Is there a chance that the correction was not if done well? If the correction, assuming what you are saying is right, if mm -hmm. it was not done well, what was the EC supposed to do? To draw our attention, right? Mm -hmm. Ask them whether they did anything. So we corrected it on the 14th. And on the 20th, you come to tell me that you identified what errors. So if you identified errors, then it is the making of the Electoral Commission because any and every error you identified on the form and you gave to us, in less than four hours, we ratified those errors mm. and we returned the form to you. But I'm saying that you just read this. This is page 137. Mm -hmm. If you go to page 138, Vice Presidential Quorum, the same error has been repeated. Uh so the EC can make errors even on their own presidential nomination form. And I'm sure that CV3 has these forms. Mm. So go to page 137, you can realize that if it is about errors being made, as we speak, the EC has not given us a final register. 
you know that precedent over the period means that we only take nominations of candidates when there is a final register. Do we blame the EC right. for all these things? I am saying that the EC had grossly in disqualifying us. Mm -hmm. They gave us just as they gave other candidates. And I listened to the Electoral Commission chairpersons this evening. Mm -hmm. Clearly, when every candidate, they listed, they identified these errors. The person was given the chance. They corrected them. When he got to us, he on, she only said that they, these are the errors. Mm. And then the committee decided and that they should disqualify. That, just take a, I, I'd want my producer to put that together again. Uh, and just and watch we'll take, whether we'll they said a... that we corrected our form and returned it. Indeed. Indeed. But what, what interest will the Electoral Commission have to disqualify you? I have no idea whether it is because I have said openly and strongly that every Ghanaian will be born into wealth and not debt. And that proceeds from cocoa, from gold, from oil will trickle directly into the bank accounts of every Ghanaian that is born. If this is what Jean Mensa doesn't want her children to enjoy, I'm sorry, but they will enjoy it. If it is the case that I'm speaking about using our own local or Ghanaian languages to become the subject of study using tree and Hausa, is that somebody doesn't want? I cannot help you. But I know that I'll become president that will ensure that no Ghanaian is born into poverty. What, what you tell me now seems as though you think the Electoral Commission intentionally disqualified you. If it is not intentional, if they are claiming that there are errors, did you read what you read it again so that people I, I, will know? I did. What did you read? I, I did. did you but, read sex or you read, you read sex? <laughs> I want us to take a listen to the electoral commissioner again. Yes, particularly about take the mm -hmm. people that they qualified right. and come to take what she said about me. Uh, let's take a listen. I think this is a longer version of the announcement. Let's take a listen. We'll come back into the studio. Mr. Bernard Mona also had incomplete particular supporters. He also used registered voters in a particular district to support his, the nomination in other districts. He also, his form also contained varying signatures for the same supporters, and in some cases, the same signature for different supporters. The committee was of the view that he be disqualified. That I should be disqualified. Did well, they what? give us the chance to correct the anomalies? No, but you said they gave you the chance. So to did we the correct anomalies? them? Because in the other people, she will tell you that they gave them a chance, but they didn't. And they either failed, or those that were able to correct the anomalies identified by the electoral commission, you decided to qualify them. Indeed. In our case, just listen, blatantly silent she on whether we corrected it or not. Indeed. And, and you have also addressed, she mentioned three things. You've addressed one of them. I, will, I want you to address the other two. Which one? Uh, apart from the errors uh, that they say you, you, you were there uh, in the incomplete, uh, you know, forms case. She also says that uh, it would appear that you had used the voters or, uh, you know, and same signatures in one of the cases. And then people in one district who had endorsed you in a separate district. Kimani. That sounds fraudulent. This is the Electoral Commission letter on the 13th of September mm -hmm. to us, and it will be, do you, you and your viewers good if you read it in total. It says, I bring you greetings from uh, the Presidential Nomination Committee and trust that this letter finds you well. The Nomination Committee has dis detected the underlisted anomalies with your nomination forms. One, incomplete particulars of supporters in pages 9, 10, 37, 39, 42, 46, 50. And it would appear that that is the only So those anomaly. are the anomalies the Electoral Commission identified and captured in a letter written to us. Mm. So what uh, perhaps I should finish it so our viewers yeah. will get so, to the... So whatever the it, Electoral Commission it, is saying it today is to other say, imported information that they are bringing, it, which is not captured yes. on the anomalies they no, sent No, hang on. Us. So it says, uh, that is what they outlined. But it also says that, meanwhile, the Commission is contacting your supporters to verify the authenticity of their consent to your nomination form, you're required to come for your nomination forms 13 September 2024 and effect the needed corrections and resubmit by 2 p.m. on Saturday 14 September 2024. We wish you well. So clearly, going by this letter, <laughs> the Electoral Commission, uh, the anomalies Jean Mensah mentioned were not told so, to you. Uh, so so you I am a witch or I am a magician? 
I can't answer that. So, so therefore, these are the anomalies the Electoral Commission identified and pointed. We rectified them in accordance with what they gave us. If you went and identified any other errors, prudency will require that you inform us. Mm -hmm. If you fail to do that, then it is the Electoral Commission that is rather an anomalous institution. So, so now that your situation is the way it is, tell us what you plan to do about oh, it. Oh, our lawyers wrote to them this morning. Okay. First, when we got that other presidential candidates had received information to come for balloting, our lawyers wrote to them, requesting that we did this, you wrote to us, we did the corrections, and there is a letter from us to you that we did the corrections and we've resubmitted. You didn't give us any letter. Mm -hmm. When our lawyer's letter went, and we came back. Then Asante Kisi, at 1.17 p.m. today. Who is Asante Kisi? He works at the Electoral Commission. Okay. He then sent me something and called me to tell me that he has sent me a note. I said, I've seen it. But Kisi, this thing that you are doing, you yourself as a matured person, if I go out and I'm talking about this, will you be happy? Didn't we correct the anomalies that you stated that they are here? Mm -hmm. He said, Bernard, this is coming from the commission. Please spare me. I will get back to you, Madam is talking. And that was the end. Kissy never got back to mm. me. But clearly, even those who send the letter, they realize that no. You said we should correct anomalies. We have corrected them. So your letter of regret cannot be referencing the same anomalies mm. that we have corrected. Indeed. So essentially, what Jean Mensa, the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, announced today, it's not what they told It is totally at variance with what they told us to correct. Mm. I see. So I don't know what pressure is on Jean Mensa to do what she's doing. But I can tell you that with my blood and with every strength on my part, we will fight this mm. to get the PNC on the ballot. The people of Ghana will get the president they want. Mm. And that president is Bernard Mona. I see. Would, it, would this be in spite of uh, what well, my producer says I should end it? So we'll end our conversation here. Thank you so much, uh, Bernard, for joining us today. Uh, Bernard Mona is the flag bearer of the PNC. He says that... He will contest his disqualification uh, because of the discrepancy in what the Electoral Commission had told him via a correspondence and, uh, you know, what the Electoral Commission announced today. It would appear he was not given the opportunity oh, to But you yourself identified the... errors on the Electoral Commission presidential form. No, I, the reason I would say it would appear, because I have to do my job No, as but I just gave you the presidential form. That is, no, the, is that, that form is what, that I completed. That is what you have given that me. That is the form. Just but I check. haven't authenticated it. But you have seen this But one. I have seen what you and have given And that they me. wanted to write sex, and they wrote sex. <laughs> and it's an error in your opinion. They are granted to make errors. <laughs> this, this conversation goes on and on. Uh, the Electoral Commission has some questions to answer. We'll follow this story closely and bring you more in subsequent broadcasts. But right now, I want you to listen to the independent candidates who also raised very key concerns about the conduct of the exercise. Let's start off with Nana Kwame Bidiakon, uh, the leader of New Force Movement. An amount of work and process to be able to be qualified. Now, once we are qualified, you cannot put some aside and deal with some first and deal with some later. You cannot tell us that the last four who are independent would now choose out of 9 to 13. And if that's what the law is, I'd like the media to know that from now, the country will prepare for that, that any time we will walk into this place and we are independent candidates, then we're second class citizens. Thank you. We, we are not seeing... We have structures enough Please, we are making progress yesterday. Please, please, let's move. So I think there was there was a final explanation about the political parties. Assuming two parties don't contest the presidential or three, and they are also in the constituencies. So there you have it. Nana Kwame Bediakon was not the only one who made uh, or raised concerns about how uh, the exercise was being conducted uh, without any priority for the independent candidates. Uh, we know that the representative of 
uh, Alan Kujo Tramanting, who on the ballot paper is considered an independent uh, candidate, Yabuabe Asamwa, also raised the same questions about why it would appear the political parties were being prioritized over the independent candidates. And that's where we want to take this conversation to now, whether or not it's time we took a second look at how the ballot order exercise goes. Professor Ali Dusedu is a political scientist. Uh, he is the head of the political department at the University of Ghana. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here, Prof. Prof, before we get into the focus of our you know, conversation, how about you tell us your thoughts about how the exercise was conducted generally? Okay, thank you so much. Good evening to your viewers. I, I think uh, it, it is a ceremony I think they do every four years when we are going to vote. But definitely, as competitive as it is, there will definitely be instances where either political, a political party or a candidate or the representative of a political party or candidate may not be happy with the process. And you saw what happened today. There were a lot of protests, even I think at the initial decision to allow candidates to select the order that they will even select the slots that they're going to be placed. There were a lot of concerns that people raised about how to, and then he didn't generate into a heated argument. That was the first part. But cool has prevailed, and then they continue with the process. And when they were, I think when they announced how it was going to be, the other candidates who said the independent contesting candidates were not also happy. So I think Yes, people would definitely express uh, reservations, but the good thing was that it went well and peaceful, and everybody has accepted the slots that they have been placed on. Mm, I see. I, I do want to look at uh, a few issues that were raised there. Looking at the conduct of the Electoral Commission, uh, did you get the impression that uh, this was properly planned and rolled out? Yeah, I think it was part of their initial political activities for, for the year. And they had, I think they shared it earlier on, the day that they opened nomination forms, the day that people, political parties are supposed to submit their nomination forms, the day that they will finish the voting and then the people will pick their slots. So it is part of the electoral calendar, which they had released earlier. And that meant that they had planned for it, and all preparations were made towards it. So what happened today could have just been an outlier case that they didn't plan for, or maybe it could just be part of the tradition that people believe must be contested. Mm, I see. Finally, let's look at the independent candidates. Uh, they had to come second to the prior uh, to uh, the political parties. They felt they felt peeved about that. Uh, do they have justification? One, I think I'm not sure there is a law in the country that says that when you are going to do the balloting, political parties must come first before uh, parliament. Uh, sorry before independent candidates. The law allows both independent candidates and political parties to contest and run for both the presidential ticket but also the parliamentary ticket. So I'm not sure I stand to be corrected that there's a law that says that the independent candidates must come after the, the presidential uh, political parties. But I also believe that it has become an established norm that has been done over the years. And, and there have been little protests or contests from the independent political party. So it continued. But I also believe that it could have a little bit of historical antecedent. If you look at the rule of independent political, independent candidates, especially at the, at the presidential level, they have been very minimal in the growth of our elections. If you look at the decolonization elections, that happened roughly between 1945 uh, moving forward. We had majority of them contesting, majority of individuals contesting as independent candidates. Then when you move a little bit beyond the 45, the 2000, that is the competitive year. So you move beyond the decolonization elections and you look at the transitional elections. You still had a lot of independent people contesting, but more for the parliamentary candidate 
done for the for the presidency. Mm. But when you look at our consolidation period now, there are a lot of independent candidates coming in stronger again, especially at the presidential level, because a lot of voters in African countries are now becoming fed up with the rule of political party development, even though they vote for them every year. So people now think that they could court the support of disillusioned citizens who are fed up with political parties and be able to lead. So because there was a period that very little independent contested at the presidential level, so maybe the the, the selection of this mm. loss were largely political parties. And very well. It, so I, I think basically it has to do with that element of historical Indeed. evolution. But by and large, I think what independent political parties can do now is to contest that norm, that established norm, and see whether there could be a law to either enforce it or to open up the space for them to be back to, for both political sorry for both political parties and independents to balance at the same time without due regard to the parties coming earlier before them. Mm, very well, Prof. We'll leave it here. Thank you so much. Professor Ali Dusedu is a political scientist. He's also head of the political science department of the University of Ghana. Uh, you're still live here on Ghana tonight. Remember, we are your election command uh, center. I want us to hear from the political parties after their placement. But before then, I want you to meet someone we'll be talking to in a tad. Hassan Ayariga is the leader and flag bearer of the All People's Congress, APC. He plays nine on the ballot paper. Uh, good evening, uh, sir. I hope you're having a great evening so far. Good evening to you and uh, good evening to your viewers. Mm, yes, was... I'm having a good evening. Uh, it's my daughter's birthday. So after the program, we are out having dinner. It looks like looks like it's a it's a double celebration uh, tonight. You sail through in the presidential, uh, you know, in the, in the presidential race as far as the ballot order is concerned, and your daughter's birthday. On the other hand, I was hoping we could catch it. Yes, there you are. Uh, we can see you now. We are happy that you could join us. But how about we hold you on just for a tad? Uh, let's take a listen to some of the you know the political parties represented at the. Uh, ballot order exercise today at the Electoral Commission. And then, well, my producer says that we could, I, what I wanted to do was take a quick break and come back, but he says that we can have our conversation. So let's go on. Are you happy where you play? It's number nine. Um, that's a striker. If you're playing a game like football match and you are put uh, the ninth position, what it means is that you are to be scoring the goals. And if you are number one, that means that you are the goalkeeper. So you have to be ready for the striker. So MPP is placed number one because they are the goalkeeper. They are the government in power. And I'm number nine. I'm the striker. So it's going to be between the striker and the goalkeeper. What is going to happen? If I get the balls from number eight, number seven, number six, I'm sure... Wonders will happen in 2024 general elections. Okay. So I'm happy with my position number nine, born for September, number nine, month of September for the uh, qualifications, number nine for balloting, the same September ninth. So you can imagine what nine means to me. It means a lot. Mm. And I'm happy with that number. I see. Uh, but you were in there, and this is not your first rodeo with the presidential race in this country. Uh, what did you think about yes. the exercise today? Um, the exercise was a bit uh, hectic. That's number one. Uh, people were not sure of it being transparent and uh, it being um, credible. And then so there was a banter between the NDC uh, representatives and the MPP representatives of the issue why the MPP should look at the balls before picking. And then, so there was one ball that was in there that was different. It had some whitish uh, line around it, and that ball was totally different. So when the NDC Fifi quote, the general secretary, picked it out and said that he wasn't sure of this ball, and it looks funny. So we all agreed that, OK, in that case, let, the, let them remove the ball. Then he was still debating on the fact that 
he's not 100% sure that this ball is correct. So they should just remove everything and change. So I said, okay, in that case, what we need to do is that, look, there are two options. Option number one is we change all the balls and bring in new balls. Or option number two, we get an independent person, maybe the media or any other person, then to wrap the page, the papers, and then put them in the ball. Because when you look at the balls, they had some names to them, the night, uh, visibility, something, something, so many names. I looked at it and I looked, I said, no, no, no. That cannot be uh, a transparent way of uh, having these balls with names. So in a nutshell, I was of the view that let somebody else pull the papers, the ballot papers, and put them in the ball instead of the EC doing that. Mm. And that also went well with all of them. But then, still, they said, okay, what they want is that they should put them in a dark rubber bag so that everybody who comes will put his hand in there and just right. pick. Right. So, so when tell... they did that, they put it in a transparent rubber bag. I see. So, so tell me this. Uh, while right. all right. of these things were going on, uh, what was going on in your own head as to why a nation as this is going through the process and it, it is, is this, um, for lack of a better word, uh, very uh, primary, if you know what I'm trying to say? Yes, for me, I really don't, I'm not worried, worried about which number I pick or which number others do. What is important is that let's pick these numbers and then go and campaign. That's the most important thing. If people want to vote for Hassan Erga, they will look for his, his face among the 13, uh, what do you call it, candidates, and pick his face and vote for him. But people believe that these numbers play an important role. I don't know, something is a spiritual way, something, uh, some people think it favors when you pick number one or when you pick the last number. For me, if I want to put them into context, mm. I think that, I think that just let's, we should just pick the numbers if it is transparent. They should roll them, not put them in the ball. Just put them down. Just wrap them like some gum. Just squeeze them and then put them down. Everybody should come and pick. And funny enough, I didn't like the idea of picking the ball and holding it and then wait until everybody is done before you open it. That was, that was something Very I well. did not agree with because some people can swap it. They can swap it. I can swap mine with any other person. Do you right. what I'm we, we're going to have to take a break you now, but do, your... do you think the process was rigged? Huh? I think that uh, there was some funny play, but let it go. Very well. We'll leave it here. Thank you so much. Asana Yariga is the leader and flag bearer of the APC.